Fueled by DeathCast. Right? It's funny, I'll, I'll walk into iLead and, and uh, um, there'll be a class of them and they'll be flying foamy Prandles down the hallways. Oh my gosh. And, and it's, it's, so, it's so cool. Um, they think I'm some sort of hero or something, which is really sad, you know, get a real role model kid. Um, but uh, they, they're awesome. Yeah. Um, they, there's so many things that they don't know they can't do this, right? Right. And if they listen to us adults, they're never going to do anything new. Yeah. Because we always tell them, don't do this, don't do that, don't do, you know, don't waste your time with that, don't go do this, right? You got to stop, you know, and the good thing is they don't listen. Right. <laughs> right. Um, the iLead kids are awesome. Oh. And Kathleen, uh, she's working on her third sp space station experiment. Yeah. I mean, who does that? I, it's incredible. Yeah, um, I, high school students doing, ex I, I, when I was going through high school, there was no way I was going to get an experiment that went into space. Right. Isabel, you were um, part of the original coffee experiment? Yes, yes, I was. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because um, we are so excited that we're part of coffee, the, the, this, this okay. coffee experiment that's being yeah. sent to the space station. But. Yeah, so, um, so Coffee 1.0 was the original project. Um, same concept as now, but there were a few bumps in the road. And as always in science. <laughs> exactly. The first experiment that we sent up was last, what, fall? December. December. Yeah. So we had um, originally chosen a different coffee company. And the kids did the experiment optimization led by Dr. Cohen and Dr. Lux at UCLA School of Dentistry. So the kids have to have an expert enrolled in their project. Right. So that's one of the requirements. Mm -hmm. So they had done all the experiment optimization. Up it went. One incredible thing, first of all, was being able to like know your project is going up to space. That was absolutely insane. But. The second part was being able to actually be there and watch like the rocket go up, be there for the launch, and also get to go around NASA, get to talk to different people, watch also because we weren't the only ones there giving presentations. There were some other schools, so getting to see their projects and getting ideas from their projects. I know that you do a lot with the science program, yep. and you actually were part of the initial experiment with the coffee going to space. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So. Uh, Kathleen had uh, approached me, uh, like, I think it was late summer of uh, last year, and she came to me with this experiment, um, and sh the opportunity to send it to the ISS, which I, I thought was amazing at right? the time. Right, like, who gets to send an experiment to the ISS? It's incredible. Uh, and so, of course, uh, I jumped right on. Um, I have done so, uh, similar things to it before. Uh, I don't know if you know what SSEP is. I don't. Can you explain um, it to me? Yeah, the Student Space Flight Experimentation Program. So that is uh, run partially by NASA, and I think funded by NASA. And so I had participated in that in the past, and that's like a nationwide thing. Uh, so I had a little bit of familiarity with it. Um, but I bring that up because I had done that before, and I had uh, designed my own experiments. And this was a project where I did, the experiment was already created and selected for flight, so I wasn't going through that process. And then the experiment didn't go exactly as planned, and that's part of science. That is science. And so we realized we need to do it again, and that's when we reached out to you guys. And which is an absolutely, I, can't, I still can't believe that we have this opportunity. Right? It's incredible. This is so exciting. I can't thank you enough for the opportunity. Well, we should thank Nicole Stott as Definitely. well, a, a former right. NASA astronaut who connected us, who also uh, believes in art and believes in education and has done incredible work and right. so grateful for the connection because we didn't know what you guys were going to say. You know, you're thinking, oh, we're going to call we're up this coffee out company. Out of, out of the they, yeah, they're going to think, why do we want to talk to these people? But you wanted to talk to us and we're incredibly grateful. In a different kind of way, we're actually kind of lucky because this way we've been able to really um, go through, do more tests. So we've been working actually in the lab over in the high school a lot. We use black coffee to kill the to, we have to. We are trying to see how well black coffee kills Streptococcus mutans, aka plaque, which is a bacteria in your mouth, uh -huh. in space. So, all right. Here's some background. Yes. Black coffee on here on Earth, uh, kill and it's just black coffee, no sugar added, no yep. cream. Uh, kills the bacteria on your teeth, Streptococcus mutans, or plaque, or plaque. Um, 
And we want to know if it has the same effect on space and if it does it more or if it does it less. Right. Wow. Wow. And what would you think would be the practical um, application if it does it more or less? Well, astronauts already drink coffee on the ISS. So we want to know. And uh, tooth decay and bone decay in microgravity is like much faster than it is on Earth. Wow. And so uh, if astronauts were to drink black coffee, uh, it could seriously help their teeth. So to send it up into space, we're using this thing called a mix stick. Uh-huh. Which I saw a little bit yes, of earlier. Yes, it's basically a tube. <laughs> it's just a tube, yes. right? <laughs> but that's going to allow the, the experiment to kind of be sent, but also be utilized, right? Yes. It's like experiment in a tube. It, the way we're doing it, I think we're using like a type three because it needs like three segments. Mm -hmm. I think that's No, I think you're right. I think yeah. that's how it was explained to me. There, so in one chamber, we have the streptococcus mutans. Mm -hmm. In another, we have a liquid that'll activate it. And in the third one, we'll have the coffee. Both of you are like at the forefront of space exploration. Like we are, we are on the cusp yeah. as humanity mm -hmm. of becoming an interplanetary species, and yeah. which is in, which is exciting as it is. That was science fiction. Literally, that sentence was science fiction <laughs> just a couple <laughs> years ago, yeah. and now yeah. it's it's becoming a reality. And both of you are doing things to further that. Is that mind blowing at all? It is. It honestly, it doesn't. Like, you don't realize it until you're, like, at NASA Ames or at the Kennedy Space Center, and you're, like, you literally take a second and you go, oh, my God, what what am I doing here of all people? Like, there's, I shouldn't be here. I'm not a student in school. There should be, like, some sort of, like, incredible scientist here. But, and it's just kind of, like, you have to take a moment and you're, like, oh, my God, like, genuinely, like, how did this happen? Like because of iLead. This is the, the incredible yeah. opportunity that you guys get. And you know, you can't belittle it. You both are scientists. You're mm -hmm. both working with scientists orbiting the Earth right now mm -hmm. on the International Space yeah. Station. Yeah. And that is absolutely incredible to think about. You guys are working on the, the coffee experiment? Yes. That's our coffee that's going to space. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, it, it, what does it feel like to be, now I'm gonna call you both scientists, because you are, to be scientists working on an experiment going to space. It, it's really fun. Um, I feel good about it. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. 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 Is it exciting? Yeah. It's very it's exciting. Really cool. Right there, it's gotta be over the two, right? And then you're gonna somebody has to take sure. this and dump it's it in between, and you'll see it's gonna fall straight down. I need to dump this one. Mm -hmm. See how it's going straight in. <laughs> you might lose 0 0.001 grams of it. <laughs> That's good, it's a reduction. Right? Yeah, the reduction is for this Okay, you got a little bit on there. Okay, 0 0.002 grams. <laughs> um, a little on this? I mean, okay, then tap it down so it's nice and down. So we got lots of room in there. That's good. And then, New margin of error. All right, you. Do it. It's within their margin of error. Yeah, you can get this. Oh, you yes. need to dry them, dude. Oh, just gonna match on that Well, the match is going to get carbon and other. That's yeah. true. So just, they'll dry. Uh -huh. That's an all that's going to evaporate pretty quickly. So just take them out, give them a little shake, air shake. shake. Yeah, that's right. And just let it, um, or you know what, let me get you another. The cap in. Uh, this cap has a hole in it, so it it's doesn't. It's the one with the screw. So a bit, uh, basically what this lets us do is put it in without like sealing too much compression or too much air into it. It's also yeah. for if you, if you were gonna load a liquid in that last chamber and you needed the full 10 milliliters, like you needed it all the way full and you didn't want air bubbles, then we could do that, and then you could go in with a pipe out through that screw hole. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, or, or or even a regular oh. syringe, so you could have it all the way filled. So on the other screw, there's a little black ring that goes right there, and that 
pressurizes just enough to make sure the seal between the plastic cap and the screw is nice and tight. So, black. And you don't want to tighten too far the plastic that makes the screw is is weaker than the plastic that makes the cap. So if you screw too tight, it'll snap the top of the screw off. Okay, our screw is in and it is if the right array. It would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely in there. It's not. Smushed, but not too smushed. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah, our clamp's nice and tight. I know you did a great job, uh, Luke. Yes. Uh, I'm making sure those are nice and tight so that they're essentially parallel with the bottom so you can make sure it's nice and clipped. So this is what it looks like when it's all done. And then we put it in as a plug bag and roll it up for the two X. Yes. And just for you guys on a when well, you usually do this, so then we do it twice again. So we have our controls: one without the coffee, and one with the so one just like this, and then one without coffee, so that we can measure it down here on Earth and compare the two. So you get that. what do you mean by control? So the control is the same thing down here, but so we're gonna be running the exact same experiment down here on Earth. Uh, with the one exactly the same as this one and then the one without the coffee so that we can measure how much growth we've had or how much it's killed down here on Earth and compare it to the one that we get back that's been to space. And that's how we can test our different results. Is everyone can see? Can you all wave and say goodbye to them? Thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations again. Bye. Bye. Thank you. It's more than just asking a question and then doing an experiment to find an answer. There's an actual purpose behind the question that they're asking um, because it affects the future of space travel in some way and it becomes really much more meaningful to them and whatever they're doing here isn't going to be thrown away. Um, they're able to write papers or continue this process. In fact, um, we've, we, in our optimization we found that uh, Death Wish coffee does not kill the bacteria oh, <laughs> as really? readily as the previous coffee that we had used and that makes me wonder what is it about the way that you brew the coffee or the, maybe the beans that you use or who knows what in that process makes it different and if it's not killing the bacteria in your mouth maybe it's not harming the bacteria in your gut maybe there's all kinds of other benefits that um, that Deathwish coffee has that other coffees maybe don't have and I'm not just saying that as is like a plug seriously like this is an important valid question not only about your coffee but about the kinds of coffee we would send to space or if we want to use coffee as a, an antiseptic in your mouth, this is not the right coffee for that, right. but it might be a better coffee in other respects for your health, so, or for astronaut health. That is incredibly interesting and exciting to hear because, I mean, when we developed this coffee, we use a blend of Arabica and Robusta beans, and a lot of coffee companies do not do that. They, they, and so that could be some of the factor, and we pride ourselves on a very low acid coffee. And, and that so might have it does not hurt your gut, you know, and that could be the fuel for space exploration, you know, that's not going to harm the astronaut in a long space space travel. Right. I love this. I love it. You can drink the coffee, but you still have to brush your teeth. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> and that's, what's wrong with that?